Hi, everyone, and welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in global connectivity, real estate, and the networks within. I'm Barb Mitchell with JSA, and I'm happy to be joined today with uh, Jeff Barber of Bloom Energy. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Barb. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's always good to see you. Always a pleasure. And the always whole a JSA pleasure crew to up, behind up, the cameras yeah. there hiding. Yes. Yeah. And we've been seeing you here and there this week. It's uh, Monday of what feels like a month long conference, but is mm -hmm. really only a few days. But uh, it's yeah. been busy already, right? It's been crazy. I, I took the time to come in a day early. Yeah. to relax, quote unquote, right. and yeah. ended up having about 15 meetings. Yeah, it's, it's funny just, you should say that. We were yeah. saying the, it just feels like it keeps getting longer and longer. You feel like you come in a day earlier, then a day earlier. And yeah. anyway, next thing you know, it's, next year we'll be yeah. here the whole month of January. It's the best, the best show in our industry to uh, meet the entire ecosystem. Right. Yeah. Everything and from it, and real estate through fiber, through data centers. Yeah, That's right. And at the start really. of the year. So it's, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. But, and so speaking of the show, I mean, you started bright and early Sunday morning, Sunday morning. you were on Absolutely. a panel, the JSA global uh, panel with tech capital. And yeah. tell us about that. What were you, what were you talking about? That I love that panel. It yeah. was fantastic. You have machine learning, AI, what we used to call high performance compute workloads, um, really a household name now, which yeah. as you know, with an IT nerd like myself, that's where I came from. These things have existed a long time, but now everyone understands the impact and they can see it with ChatGPT and other things. And we really geared it towards what's the impact on power, on geographic location yeah. for the data center. Will the data center look the same? How will the traditional developers deal with this? Yeah. Uh, much higher rack densities and cooling and everything. So it was a we were able to nerd out on the uh, data center <laughs> right. world, so it was good. Yeah, and got you out of bed on a Sunday morning in, uh, and off the beach. Absolutely. So I've was... not been on the beach yet. Uh, Don't yeah. start those rumors, but, you know, <laughs> okay. maybe later. All right, yeah. Uh, so on that note, I mean, these were some of the things we wanted to talk about uh, today mm -hmm. anyway. I know that um, you mentioned uh, AI and, I think, you know, power. And so with power being potentially a bottleneck, right, to the industry, talk about that. Yeah, I, I think potentially a bottleneck is, is probably the wrong term. It's, right. the, it's the number it one. one barrier yeah. now to bringing new capacity online. As the developers will tell you, uh, many markets are 1% vacancy. Um, if you have available power in space, you're leasing it on a long-term lease. Yep. Um, the utilities are taking you know, dirty, dirty energy producing formats offline. Transmission lines are aging. So we see at the same time, we see dropping production. We're also seeing transmission capabilities declining yeah right so it's a yeah it's a major major issue in our industry and it's 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 blocking a lot of development as my friends will tell you yeah and the other thing that's happening i mean these things all i think you've even said this these things all tie together right mm -hmm. the other the other element here is the densification of the of the, the data hall so mm -hmm. how does that tie in yeah that's a that's gonna that's going to be a tough a tough issue that we have to address so you have hundreds or thousands of developments out there that were built for 15 kilowatts a rack, which was yeah. considered plenty. If I have normal Intel architecture, normal Cisco or Juniper switching or what have you. Um, now with the with the propagation of GPUs and high performance compute and you know machine learning and AI, yeah. I need to go potentially as a developer to 40, 50 or 100 kilowatts a rack, which has a domino effect on how do I cool that? How do I deploy that? Does my data hall look the same, you know, a, right. a four megawatt data hall in the past was maybe 10,000 square feet. Yeah. That might shrink by two thirds now. So how do we deal with that? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And so power, not potentially a bottleneck, definitely a bottleneck. Yes. Definitely I mean, a bottleneck. and as we see growth and demand exploding mm -hmm. globally, are there particular markets that are, that are jumping out as looking for alternative power solutions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, within within our team at Bloom that specializes in data centers, I mean, you see the traditional data center markets, certainly yeah. California Bay Area, uh, Silicon Valley area. Um, you still see Northern Virginia. Um, what's really interesting is markets that formerly had a tremendous amount of power and no transmission capabilities, markets uh, like Arizona or even Texas, yeah. where power was cheap and abundant, that's no longer the case, right? So uh, there's there has been such a consumption cycle with with new capacity coming online over the past i would say decade maybe five to ten years yeah. that the utilities are truly quote unquote out they're not able to right. get you anything for a decade 
and in some markets wow. that's e that's even longer hmm. right now this is this is above and beyond the supply chain issues we see with with transformers and with other elements right but it's 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 a it's a very big problem and one one that bloom can absolutely address yeah, yeah. well and on that note i mean it's all, i always find it's so tough because we want to talk about all these big topics and yeah. there's so much to talk yeah, yeah. about and we only have a few minutes and i know that that you um have a very busy show ahead, but you're still here for several days. Mm -hmm. And and so for people that are on site and want to maybe co connect with you or or maybe they're not as fortunate as us as to be here <laughs> running from yeah, you know, place definitely. to place, um, how can they connect? Many different ways. Uh, LinkedIn would be a great one. Yeah. Um, you know, um, go to our website, bloomenergy.com. That's, that's a great one. You will find a tremendous amount of ESG and technical data uh, yeah. out there. Um, so yeah, I'm not that hard to hold, get a hold of uh, at this conference. <laughs> right. I am. I'm seeing the inside of a of a conference room right. the entire time, starting at seven thirty this morning, yeah. through eight o'clock tonight. So yeah, I think every time we've seen you, we've been you've been running. Yeah, in one direction or it, another. there is a lot of demand right now for what we do. You know, on-site yeah. microgrid dedicated power for data centers. I mean, I, I like to ask the question: Are you experiencing any power problems? And it's somewhat rhetorical because they yeah, all say, like, "Of course we are." Every one of them says, yeah. "Yes, yeah. we are." Well, thank you. And, and yeah. to all our viewers, hopefully they can connect with you with Bloom Energy, Jeff Bar Barbie here joining us. And thank you again. Thank you very much. For your time. Thanks, Always Barbara. a pleasure. We'll talk again. Always good to many, see Many, many times, I'm sure. I'm sure we will. Yeah. Thank and you thank very much. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in today to JSA TV. Happy networking.